Good afternoon, Saitlanders, and welcome to Saitlanders, the week in review for Friday, the 13th of September. Friday, the 13th, of course, is not a superstition uh, that should apply to Christians. And in any case, it's invalid because it is a superstition that comes out of Freemasonry. And it is to do with the day a uh, thousand years ago that a certain pope and a certain French king clamped down on the, the Knights Templar, which was actually a Roman Catholic Church order. The different monks that you see in movies and so on belong to different orders, and that was an order of monks, of warrior monks, that uh, turned sour, and so they, they persecuted them, tortured them, did all sorts of things. Uh, when you... <laughs> When you read the, the torture that was meted out, I certainly find myself wavering as to whose side I'm on. You know, the, the bad guys or the other bad guys. Uh, very bad things happened in those events. Whether they were deserved or not, who knows. I'd like to say thank you for the compliment that I received from China. Not a Chinese person, a notable South African person who lives and works in China. Thank you very much. Coming from you, that was an especially appreciated compliment. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for the anonymous compliment that I received a few days ago. Whoever sent that to me, thank you very much. And then the... Thank you very much. Sorry, I, I really didn't do justice to your generosity. And thanks for the blessing received anonymously a few days ago. Yeah, sure. Very kind. Um, and thanks for the the prayers from the USA. I'm guessing now, but I have a feeling that you're South African. Uh, let me know. Um, I'll be interested. As a matter of interest, before we proceed with the week's events, 64% of the global population is electing leaders this year, elections as we had in South Africa a few months ago. And I mention that as a piece of background scenery for those of you who are trying to weigh up the turbulence of the times that we're in and the interconnectedness, the coalescence of so many disparate events. Uh, it is a time when the world is choosing who it wishes to uh, reign over it, if you like. I remind you also that on Monday the 19th, I say remind, I have mentioned this in a number of international interviews and in at least one Thursday night interview with Marius from Radio Grootrefeer. On Monday the 9th of August, we saw a super sturgeon moon. That's when the moon is nearer to the earth and it's just ginormous. To human sight, I couldn't tell you exactly how much bigger it is, but I would hazard a guess that it appears, in my eyes, to be something like three times bigger. Have you ever seen those optical illusions where they, they have a circle, and then they have a circle just a little bit larger around it? And they say, which of the two is larger? And everybody says, well, the inside circle is the other one so thin just around the, the edges. But being that little bit larger... Just a little bit. The thin circle or band is very much larger, in fact, than the disc in the middle. So it is with the, the moon. It might be an optical illusion, but if you didn't see the super moon, it appears ginormous. And we had one on Monday, the 19th of August, and we're going to have another three, which is very, very, very exceptional. I forget how often it happens, but it's... Very rare. And I, I should think in my lifetime, it's never happened before. On Tuesday, the 17th of September, that is to say in uh, four days time, we will have the super harvest moon, super sturgeon moon, super harvest moon. And then the super hunters moon will appear on Thursday, the 17th of October. So August, September, October. And then the super beaver moon will appear on Friday, the 15th of November. Very interesting stuff. Then I remind you again, I have mentioned this in, in various interviews, 
that on the 9th of January last year, a Chinese observatory called Tzu Tin Chan, I don't know how well I did there, detected in the night sky a unidentifiable object hidden by cosmic clouds that appeared to disappear very shortly afterwards. And then on the 22nd of February, I've made the error in the past of saying the 22nd of January. I just had another look now. 22nd of February last year, a South African observatory called Atlas was looking in that region to see if it could see what the, the Chinese had seen. And it picked it up and was able to identify it and give the rate of speed at which it was traveling and the direction and the intensity of the glow and so on and so forth. So the, the comet was named for both observatories. That comet will appear, the scientists say, on the 27th of September. But certain religious people are saying that it is a comet that has been expected for thousands of years. And in fact, that it fulfills all of the criteria and that technically speaking, its appearance counts from the 25th, Friday the 25th of September. It's a very complicated story. I won't go into it. Let it suffice to say that it will be 75 million kilometers from Earth, and uh, that will be in early October, and it may be visible for as many as 70 days. Now, why do I mention this? Because it has nothing to do with this week. I mention it because we're about to talk about numerous enormous events that have transpired this week, terrifying events, which are being reported in certain spiritual circles as meant to happen now that these celestial events and these enormous voting events across the world are in fact tied into the earthly disasters and so on that we we are about to witness and it's worth Saitlanders knowing that even though to you it may be superstitious or Occultic, with which I would agree with you, by the way. The fact remains that the people who believe themselves to be in charge of orchestrating all of these sinister events, who take credit for orchestrating them, insist that they are doing it according to these calendars. So who better than Satan is to be aware of the truth behind what we are witnessing in the world, what is being foist upon us by the enemies of God. So let us begin with the week's events. On Saturday, the 7th of September, following our last week in review, on Friday, the 6th of September, nationwide protests broke out in 130 cities and towns across France after President Emmanuel Macron invited a party that did not win the recent parliamentary elections to form a new government. There is great dissatisfaction in France and President Emmanuel Macron is conducting himself as if he has nothing to fear in repeatedly, flagrantly contravening the democratic processes of the French, the very complicated, I might add, French electoral system. On Sunday, the 8th of September, there was not a single truly noteworthy event pertaining to our cause anywhere in the world. On Monday, the 9th of September, Ukraine began to use for the first time so-called dragon drones that spew molten thermite on Russian positions. Thermite is a sort of a, uh, it's a metallic compound which burns at a very high heat and I am no chemist I read up on it and I lack the jargon jargon means uh, vocabulary pertaining to a special field be it mechanics electricians or plumbers or whatever the case may be I lack the jargon to fully understand what all of the chemists what they described in the research that I did but let it suffice to say that there's a reason why it hasn't been used up until now. It's evil stuff. On Tuesday, the 10th of September, 
former President Donald Trump debated against current Vice President of the USA, Kamala Harris. Apparently, you're meant to pronounce it not Kamala, but Kamala. And it was a fiasco. He didn't do terribly well. She appeared to be reading from a script. It has now turned out that she may have had what are called Nova H1. Hearing aids, audio monitors, technically speaking, in-ear monitors is the technical term, disguised as pearl earrings. She, it also transpires, was given the questions in advance. America, it is becoming a parody, a satire, a caricature. Also on Tuesday, the 10th of September, the Netherlands lifted all sanctions, all restrictions, if you like, that had previously been imposed upon the weapons that it had donated to Ukraine. In other words, they allowed Ukraine free reign to use their weapons any which way that they like, including deep strikes into Russia. And the Netherlands encouraged all other donor countries to do the same. It was a very, very controversial move, and we'll come back to it. In an interview on Rick Wiles's True News, one Todd Callender, a, a specialist attorney in the USA, revealed quite some time back, a long time ago, not in the past week or at all recently, but it has become relevant because it appears as if his prediction is coming true that there has been apparently a 5,000% increase in the rate of non-combat fatality among serving U.S. military personnel, most notably those who were vaccinated, especially of HIV AIDS. Also on Tuesday, Russia began a 400 warship exercise across nine maritime theaters. For instance, the Black Sea and separately the, the Baltic, the, the Pacific and the White Sea and so on and so forth. Nine theaters across the world, which will last until the 16th of September. Vladimir Putin gave a speech a few days ago in which he said that it was the biggest exercise, naval exercise, for three decades. Certain specialists have since come out and said it is, in fact, given that it is, it is one event, one coordinated event, involving over 400 vessels, the largest naval exercise since World War II. I'm not in a position to, to gainsay them or to to contradict that, who knows, but the boffins seem to think that this is the largest event of its sort for 79 years. On Wednesday, the 11th of September, it began to be widely reported that leaks are revealing that it has already been discussed and agreed and shall be announced possibly this week end that NATO shall begin attacks deep inside Russia. Now, let's be clear. They're doing it under the guise of Ukraine being given license to carry out those attacks with NATO donated weapons. However, the point has been made by many specialists over and over and over again, ever since NATO first began donating weapons, certain weapons to Ukraine, that it's impossible for some weapons to be operated by Ukrainians, that even if there was enough time for them to be trained, the NATO countries would not give them the algorithms, the codes to launch each individual missile, for instance, not only, but for instance. And even if they did have the codes, which would destroy the security of those NATO countries, if other parties got hold of them, so even if they did have an opportunity to receive adequate training, which they haven't, so the operators are NATO soldiers, and even if they did have the codes, which they don't, 
they don't possess the satellites required for the targeting. And that's not something to which you give free access, military satellites. So NATO is doing the targeting. NATO is doing the algorithmic operation. And NATO is doing the on the ground, pressing the button and maintaining the tires type operation of those units, which vary from very advanced artillery systems to storm shadow missiles to planes to all sorts, not least drones. So we stand on the edge, on the on the very teetering edge of a precipice of NATO going to war with Russia. And we'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Yesterday, the gold price reached a new high, an unbelievable high of $2,572 a troy ounce. A normal ounce is 28 and some small change grams. A troy ounce is about 33 and some small change grams, rounded off to 28 and 23 grams respectively. And it's now holding steady as we speak. I checked just before we started at uh, $2,566.50. So it's dropped only marginally. There hasn't been a technical correction worth mentioning. Silver reached $30.15 yesterday. It is now at $29.98. It too has not really corrected, certainly not enough to mention. These are phenomenal, phenomenal ongoing developments that are caused by two things. Institutional investors and billionaires seeking safe haven in gold and silver because they know what's coming. And the loss of value, the erosion of value, terrific erosion of value that is being manifested in the consumer price increase rate. Not strictly speaking, the inflation rate, strictly speaking, the consumer price index increase, CPI increase rate in the USA. The rate of prices increases in the USA right at the moment, I can tell you. Having spent three months there last year for Mr. Miller, having been deployed to go there to work for Mr. Miller for three months at the end of last year, is it's mind-boggling. You, you cannot imagine how the prices are going up. And that bodes very poorly for the next period. There is a man called Edward Dowd, who is regarded as one of the greatest investing minds of all time. He was... Uh, a genius in investing BlackRock money. We all know about BlackRock, evil company. Well, he was an employee of that company. A very good man, has done a lot of work regarding the COVID pandemic and the, the clot shots and so on and so forth. An absolute genius. He has a new article out in which he describes why, speaking as a statistician, one of the greatest living statistical minds. He believes there's going to be an almighty catastrophic event in the global financial and economic markets in mid-October. We'll have to watch out for that. Vladimir Putin was interviewed about the anticipated announcement to which we alluded earlier that NATO would allow Ukraine, but actually NATO, to begin using NATO weapons on for deep strikes well into Russia. And he said that that was tantamount to a declaration of war on Russia. He's spoken about it twice now. Once was yesterday uh, in St. Petersburg. And his words have been more than serious, severe. And he's a man who doesn't bluff. Moon over Alabama, for those of you who are familiar with the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Moon over Alabama site, if you like. It's an author, really, on different platforms. You can look, look the author up anywhere, search, and you'll get the Telegram presence and the Twitter presence and their own website. 
has an article out describing how Vladimir Putin never bluffs and making the point following his words of yesterday that that means that the very first time that there are strikes deep into Russia, Europe and Russia are going to go to war. Apparently, Vladimir Putin has said in an interview, blood will run all across Europe and the entirety of Europe will be at war. I haven't read those articles myself, but apparently he has been doing further interviews on the same subject. And these those words have come out today, Friday, the 13th of September. Pravin Gordon died early this morning. And the Bella Bill, the Basic Education Laws Amendment Bill, is being signed into law right as we produce this video. But Cyril Ramaphosa is hibernating the implementation of clauses 4 and 5, namely the clauses pertaining to language and to admissions control for three months due to frantic opposition for further discussion within the GNU. But I put it to you that that is meaningless. It only has meaning for three months. It has no potential for any other meaning because you know from past experience what the ANC will do. They'll hold conversations with the rest of the Willebius Partei or the Willebius government. And when they fail, they will implement those clauses anyway. It's dark days indeed for those of us with children at school, particularly for those of you who have children at Afrikaans language schools. That is a bit of a somber note on which to end. Nevertheless, we wish you all of the best and look forward to producing more and more videos now that we seem to have a, a good solution up and running. And I invite you to tune in. You can just Google search it. You'll find it easily enough to the interview that I'll conduct this coming Sunday at three o'clock South Africa time on the Sunday long live radio show on World Broadcasting Network with Ria Bo, the head of that entire station. And I remind you that on Thursdays, I'm doing an ongoing series with Marius of Radio Grootrofie on current events, where we dive a little bit more deeply than we do on Fridays in the Week in Review into a narrower spectrum of events that are pertinent at that time, that week, that day. And last but not least, I remind you, if you're not already aware of it, we shall begin a new series on Tuesday evenings in two weeks time about prepping. It's going to be all about encouraging people to prepare in a cheap and easy manner. We'll also explore some very rare and expensive prepping solutions. But for the most part, it will be how to prepare exceedingly valuable, unknown, unthought of items for the time that lies ahead. And I promise you, you are going to be astonished. Many of you will be thinking, well, how can you be the only person who thought of it? Somebody must be thinking of it. Actually, I was inspired by somebody else's work to spend three or four years going down that rabbit hole. Uh, so I can assure you that very, very, very much of what I share will be preparations that you've never heard of before, but which by the time I've explained the reason for you or to you, you will be absolutely convinced that they will for sure be extremely valuable. Thank you very much and goodbye and God bless all of you. Cheerio.